How are you? I'm good. Better now. Good stuff. So, you know, the story has been told over and over again in a record amount of time, in the shortest time possible. It's insane. Um, so I want to just talk about, like, now and just talk about your interests and talk about what you want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Me. I'd like to talk about anything other than myself. Yeah, I know. What a crazy few months you've had, huh? <laughs> it has been different, yeah. You, you have said, one of the things I, I, I really like that has been a constant throughout the, the, the press that you've, you've had to do is that you've said that this has always been something that you wanted to do to make music, that it really lives and dies with the music. That's it. The rest of it is whatever, right? I like writing and I like singing, but um, I'm passionate about it because I enjoy the craft of it. Yes. But I do actually have a big outside life outside of music. Included in that, in, in those interests, are, are film. I mean, you, you're, you're really into the idea it feels very cinematic when you, know, when you listen to it. Well, I'm definitely interested in like having a cinematic soundscape like within a record and then I do like I do like films yeah I do did it kind of play any role at all on the album Born to Die I mean did you, you, you mean it's, it's sort of impossible to make cinematic sound and music without having a scene in your head right that's true you know I think when I wrote the songs I was sort of looking back to moments in my past and trying to um, paint pictures with my words about the way that things used to be mm -hmm. and then when I met Emil Haney who's sort of been a famous hip hop producer for the last 10 years Can I just stop you there and also point out for those listening that he's probably the classiest beat maker in New York City He's really classy You know when I met him and when I met Justin Parker I really felt like I met uh, my musical soulmates and you know Emil's beats plus Larry Gold's string composition really uh, sort of started to make a cohesive of kind of gorgeous sound for the entire record. It's because, you know, you know Emil makes modern day hip hop soul music, I yeah. think. Yeah, like when I found Emil, we were sort of an unlikely duo, but uh, he knew exactly what I was talking about when I described the sound of the record I was trying to bring out. And uh, we've just been, God, we're, we're together so much, you mm. know. I, yeah. bet you, I bet there have been times recently where you wish you were back in the studio in that safe place with him just making beats. Yeah, I do a lot of the time. But, you know, I've, I've, I've really found like a musical family within the three producers that mm. I've, I met. And, um, you know, and Emil has been amazing, really supportive. Like, he's not even moving on to another project yet. <laughs> we're still working on like a mixtape to release in awesome. late summer. And, yeah. Fantastic. We're going to yeah. continue to talk to Lana Del Rey and we're going to play right now a session track that uh, you were kind enough to do for us very recently <laughs> of the title track, your new album called Born to Die. Just come, how cool is Made of Veil, by the way? Just gorgeous. It was crazy. Amazing, isn't it? It yeah. smells of music in there. It does. The band was just like in heaven. Did they check out the Ben Crosby plaque on the wall? <laughs> I don't know if they saw that. We spoke briefly on the phone when you were in New York City once, <laughs> shopping on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> I wasn't shopping, I was like sitting on the corner and then you were like, oh, Fifth Avenue, how fancy. Oh, you're fancy, huh? Oh, you fancy, you think you're fancy, huh? I was like, great. So uh, you're back out here in the UK and um, and I suppose given that it was very recent, we should give you a chance to talk about what happened last night with the Maccabees. I mean, what, it's, it's, you know, it's early for it to, to be not doing a show and, and it never hurts anybody more than the musician who has to cancel, so yeah. what happened? Well, no one wants to cancel, but I just really wasn't feeling very well and you know I was I did the Made of Veil sessions earlier in the afternoon and pretty much by the end of that I was pretty certain I couldn't really go on stage but I wish that I could have but you know never really had to cancel a show before. It's just to see the music it's, it's we've gotten too serious did you hear that all of a sudden? Jesus, is that true? It got too serious there for a second. All of a sudden, it was like it was like the end of the Incredible Hulk there for a second. I was, like, I was gonna start crying, and you would start crying, and Claire would have started crying, and everyone would have cried a little bit. We all have felt better at the end. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. Um, now, though, I want to talk about the life thing because not everybody necessarily, I think should feel once they make a great record that they need to rush out and perform it. I mean, if you think about yourself in the essence of what you're trying to do with your art, with your craft, right. and you feel very comfortable in the studio working with your producers yeah. and the people around you, <laughs> yeah. you know, for instance, some people, when they, they, they think about public speaking, it makes them want to throw up. Yeah, it makes um, people. Yeah, I mean, how do you feel when, I mean, but there are some musicians, for instance, if I said Dave Grohl, what's right. the thing, you know, you look forward to most about being in Food Fighters, he'd go, turn, play it live, man! Yeah, like, totally. how do you feel when you think about the idea of, let's say your manager came in and said, okay, let's do a tour, how would it make you feel right now? Well, it kind of depends on the day for me, like obviously, like I am sort of more, I, you know, like I do well in the studio because I like, I like putting things together kind of with my producers and things like that. But, you know, ever since I went on the road um, and I realized how many good people were out there, hmm. I actually felt pretty good, you know, on the road. I like to travel, but, you know, I also really like Brooklyn. I like being in New York, so mm -hmm. I miss home. And, um, you know, it really depends on the show. Like, if it was, I probably wouldn't play a really giant show. I would probably, you know, but as long as they're kind of small, I, I have a good time. Yeah, right. And many who have gone before her, whether it's, you know, Neil Young right through to Bob Dylan or, or most recently Adele. Right. These are the artists that say, look, if there's enough interest in what I have to, to do live, right. then I'm going to pick and choose how I present that. Have you thought about, like, 
make it more bespoke for you in the future. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, everyone on my team is totally aware that I'd like to cap every venue at 900 people. So, yeah, yeah like, those artists are a good example of people who did things on their own terms. And I think the people that I'm involved with, like, they're involved with me because they know that I'll do things the way that I want. What I really cared about was just that the record was good. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean... Too good. Now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's out. It's out. <laughs> Off to the races. There you go. That horse is bolted. Welcome <laughs> to the modern world. And you are, and, and this has been a really interesting experiment. I want to talk about that in a sec, but let's just let's make it light again and talk a little bit about ASAP Rocky. Um, <laughs> this guy is just a, a real breath of fresh air yeah. for American rap music. And I know what a, what a B girl you are as well. Well, I mean, you know, I like the best of the best. I don't like it all, but I mean, you know, like I feel. I feel like energized by yeah, like good good rap music. You are a very intriguing character, you know, just outside of your music and the way that you know you, the kind of the subject matter of your songs. I think you're going to find yourself meeting your heroes in some pretty interesting environments. You know? Ooh, I like that prediction. Yeah, right. Um, this has been a fascinating experiment watching this all happen. Um, for for my point of view, for one very specific reason, which is that the music that you've made, right. the art that you've attached alongside it through videos or photographs. The way that you've that you present yourself, be it honest or otherwise, and that's your that's entirely your business, by the way. Okay. But I believe it's absolutely honest. But what what it's done is it's is it's conjured up a, a, an essence of a time that's that's come before us, and yet it's it's found its way to people in the most modern way imaginable. Right. Have you thought about that? And if and, and if not, can you now? <laughs> well, I mean, when I was putting the clips together, like I wasn't really going necessarily for a vintage feel. Mm -hmm. I just knew that I loved the quality of vintage film, but I didn't think that people would really think that it like harkened back to bygone eras so much. When did you sort of become a digital kid? Because you grew up in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, the internet has become something that has changed the way that, you know, everything is distributed and discovered, but pre predominantly music has been completely transformed. The industry's had to redefine itself. I mean, when did you sort of become a digital kid and, and, and discover that it could work for you as an artist? I mean, like, in terms of being a digital kid, I, I had different phases of it. Like, I remember when I was 14 years old, Instant Messenger came, came about. And so, like, we all met our boyfriends over Instant Messenger. It's like the carrier pigeon of digital, like, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just remember when that happened, it was like, you just couldn't freaking believe it. You were, like, talking to, it like, the most popular senior in high school and, like, sneaking out the house to meet him down the block because yeah. it was on IM. That was crazy. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I didn't really pay attention to the internet. Like, at, I've always been a big believer in the internet, known, known a lot of people who were sort of, you know, tr trying to use it to unify the world in a good way and yeah. make, make our world one, you know, one small global community where information could travel quickly and, and, you know, help could travel quickly. So, I mean, I never actually thought about it in terms of, like, um, furthering my music. I, I was always putting up videos on YouTube since yeah. I was really young, just yeah. because it was a passion of mine. Um, I liked editing and things like that, but I always thought, like, if anything went well, it would be because someone came to one of my shows. <laughs> um, the traditional approach. Hey, that's good music. I'll tell someone about it. Yeah, you know, I mean, that was how I read about other people sort of um, mm -hmm. getting their music heard. But it's interesting though, because now that, that's just a given these days in how we discover music. But and this is a just a. Superb yeah. segue here. I've just come up with it in my nice. head. This is on some broadcasting. This is classic broadcast material. <laughs> Back in the day, you right. had to rely on classic singer-songwriters like Bob Dylan or Joan Baez to get the message across. You know, they were the uh, the modern-day information carriers, mate. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in the day, maybe. And, and yeah, they were. I mean, that's to a certain extent how th how things changed was through song. You've got a track with Bobby Womack on his forthcoming new album with Damon Albarn and yeah. Richard Russell. I do. How was that experience for you working with the legend? Uh, it was good. I mean, um, <clears throat> I think they wanted me to come in after, like, the day after they saw me on Jules. Mm -hmm. So, really, they just, you know, Bobby wanted me to freestyle uh, on just some of the tracks he had. He wanted me to just make up a chorus, and so that's what I did. And uh, it's been a while now, but it was beautiful. Well, I've heard the track, and oh, I can. Have you? Yep, and I can tell you that it's incredible. And really? there's a note that you hit on that song where you go high and your voice <laughs> cracks. Okay. And I was like, it sounds like Bobby. <laughs> and it's not, it's you. Oh, shoot. There you go. Hey, that's good. I haven't heard it. I'm glad it's like, I'm glad they're going to use it, you know? Well, fingers crossed. I think it's amazing. Fantastic. I think she's really proud of me. I can't wait for people to hear that side Aww. of you as well with that, with that track. It's going to be, it's going to be good, interesting. Okay. Lots of things to look forward to, um, you know, in terms of this year. Ideally, having you know, achieved so much in terms of what's conventionally successful with lots of people watching video games and listening to the songs on the album, you, know, you made it, the album's leaked, you made it. Um, you're there, you did it, congratulations, you're a modern day hero. What do you want, what do you want to look back on 2012 and, what, and, and what do you ideally want to have achieved? I mean, I think the same things I sort of want to achieve every year, which is just to have no regrets and live gracefully. And I wanted to make a good record and I did that, so that's cool. Yeah, you did. And, um, you know, I hope you enjoy the, that, that process of getting it out and the way people react to the music because, you know, you know as well as I do, that's all that really matters. And, um, and thanks very much for your time, Lana Del Rey. Oh, thank you.
And we will catch up with you when the time is right. Are you sort of planning any shows out here again in the, in the, in the summer, or is that too early to say? Um, thinking about festivals. Kind of have to figure it out. It's nice to talk with you.